This, this is the GTN, GTN Christmas, Christmas show. show. Ho, 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 ho. And as you can see, we have a special guest. Father Christmas has joined us for no, this. No, Heather, it's me. It's Mark. Oh, oh sorry. So I don't mean to sound disappointed. Um, yeah. It's Mark. Eating my beard anyway. Well, we've also got some lovely Merry Christmas messages from some pros. Hey, GTN. Just wanted to say a very big Merry Christmas to all the listeners out there. Have a great festive period and looking forward to seeing people next year at the races. Hello all you GTN viewers, Merry Christmas, wish you a festive season over this time and, uh, and a successful 2018. Hello GTN viewers, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the Sport of Leuven, where more than 2,000 kids are running today for a charity, so Merry Christmas everybody. We are in Spain on training camp, I wish everyone a happy Christmas, Clarky. Less sausage rolls and more kilometres please guys. Oh. Happy Christmas, get off YouTube and get out on your bike. Oh. Happy Christmas, keep pecking up. Merry Christmas, get them mince pies down. Finally Ben. Merry Christmas, have a beer for me. Merry Christmas all. Thanks Alistair, I mean, what does he know anyway, hey? Well, I've had to take my beard and wig off because it was just very uncomfortable to be honest. Uh, but Heather, you seem to be enjoying yours. I am. Very festive. I know, I'm feeling it. But don't let this look deceive you because we still have a relatively normal show. Admittedly, we don't have any race results, but there's still lots to talk about, including what's coming up in 2018. There's been a few new events announced. ITU have got some rule changes that they've just announced and also it's graphene in running shoes. Well, some of us are heading into the winter, so we thought we'd chat about the winter triathlon. And if it's not winter for you, it's pretty cool anyway. <laughs> This is the GTN. Haha. Haha. Waffle waff, waff. Rule changes, and a lot of them are relevant. <laughs> 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 Okay, first up, we're gonna talk about the new events for 2018. And Challenge have just announced that they're gonna be returning to North America to do Challenge Daytona. Yeah, I think that's this time next year, isn't it? Yeah, I believe 8th, 9th of December. Um, and there's gonna be a big prize purse up for grabs, $150,000. And it's gonna be a qualifier for their The Championship race, which took place in Slovakia, and we got the opportunity to go to this year. Cool, well, it'll be interesting to see how Challenge get on over in America again. Yeah, so. and I believe it's also on the race circuit, so things you see on the, the speedway racing, so, so very cool, very oh, cool. Oh, exciting. Well, another new event um, in Norway this time, so they've held the 70.3 um, Ironman race for a few years. And I've done it. Huh? Well, very cool. Well, I'm afraid you can't do it anymore, Mark. So now, if you want to go back to Norway, you have to do the full Ironman. I don't want to do it. <laughs> so they're replacing the 70.3 for full Ironman, which um, is pretty cool. It sounds like a, a pretty awesome town to have. Yeah, to I have to in. say, one of the best races I've ever done. Wow. The, the town absolutely shuts down and they're all behind the race. They support it fully. The organizer has just put everything into it. Oh, He's got lane ropes through the whole of the swim course. And one year he was actually chatting about having lights on the bottom of the lake no that way. you followed. I'm not sure if I agree <laughs> with that, but pretty cool. That would be cool. Well, they're making the swim a bit more of a spectacle as well because they're after, I think, 2,300 meters, the swimmers actually come out in an Australian style cool. swim. So they come out and go back in again, which is great for spectators. And if you're a strong swimmer, you know, you get a chance to sort of absorb yeah, a bit more absolutely. of the, the atmosphere. And and another race, um, in this one is organized by the guys that organized Norseman, and they combined with X-Try World Series, and they are doing the Patagon Man, which takes place in Patagonia, and it's very similar to the Norseman in that it's just epic, um, yeah. very hard. It's an Ironman distance event, and you have to have support through yeah. the whole thing. And it's a point, point race, which is quite unusual, isn't very it? Very unique, which, um, yeah. Would be pretty cool. I think it's one we need to Sign pencil in our yeah. pencil in our diary this time next year. Okay, on with some other use, and we have the ITU rule changes. And one interesting one is that disc brakes are going to be allowed for ITU races. Yeah, I mean, I think it's moving with the times. UCI have allowed disc brakes, and more and more people are riding disc brakes. You've just got a disc brake. Right I did. Back. I really like it. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think it makes sense. Yeah, and another very interesting one is that another athlete cannot help in the forward progress of another athlete. And interestingly, they're not just going to penalise the one that's helped, but you'd be disqualified if you were the helper as well. Yeah, and I think we all remember the Brownlee brothers yeah. at the WTS event in Mexico. Which and I reckon famous. it's come as a result of that, probably, because there was a lot probably. of controversy wasn't yeah. there around that at the time yeah. and people saying it wasn't fair. But. Yeah, but interestingly, it's only specifically for forward progress. So say an athlete is having mm. trouble, you could stop 
Have well, you, have you ever helped anyone in a race? Um, I have stopped Cy Richardson. Had a little accident in a race recently. <laughs> um, I'd like just like to drop that in there. Um, so I stopped to make Imagine sure it's okay. Imagine if you hadn't if you hadn't stopped to help him, you might have won. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but obviously, a lot of the rule changes are relevant to ITU elite races, yeah. um, and one specifically is that if you miss a briefing previously, you just had to come onto the pontoon last, no matter what your ranking was. But this time or this year, they're bringing in the rule that you basically are delayed on your start, yeah, which is. Awesome. Very interesting, I think. It's major, especially for draft legal racing. Yeah, I, I don't want to say I'm looking forward to seeing someone miss their that. briefing. <laughs> Would be quite cool to see it though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've seen it in cycling and now we're gonna see it in running. Graphene, it was discovered in 2004 and it's kind of a super material. Yeah. It conducts, it's biodegradable, it's flexible, it can be almost as thin as you like, it's strong, it it can do anything, and it even got a Nobel Prize in 2010. But they do struggle to make it until recently. Well, now it looks like we're going to start to see it in running shoes, which is quite amazing. So Innovate have worked out how they can start to use the particles in a running shoe, and it's going to potentially make shoes 50% more, um, more resistant, more stretchy, and stronger all at once, which is like those properties you don't think would even go together. It's yeah, incredible. it's amazing. I mean, obviously Innovate specialise in their off-road running shoes, so having those properties will really kind of maximise the performance of their shoes. Um, just excited to see what graphene can do, really. But I mean, if it makes a shoe that durable, is that then, uh, I don't know, if some shoe companies might be, you know, worried that they, they go off by people buying shoes so often because you wear them out. Oh yeah, Could very good point. Or maybe the material being so strong that it never wears out. Yeah. Kind of seems like graphene can be whatever they want it to be. Well, let's wait and Impressive. see. Okay, another bit of tech news, and a couple of weeks ago, Garmin announced the launch of their power meter for running. They announced the actual release of the product coming out back in October, but it's available on the shelves for people to buy now, and what do you think of power meters for running? You know, I still am traditional in that sense, and I'm, I'm new to a power meter on a bike, and I love the numbers on that, but that's what I love about running, is you just go out, and I don't even run with headphones, I just like to run, and yeah, I'll look at my watch, and maybe afterwards I'll analyze things. So maybe it'd be interesting as, you know, for your coach, but I personally just like the pure. Uh, I have to agree, I, I'm, I'm very much the same, I like to just head out the door sometimes, even without a watch, and just yeah. enjoy a run. But I do think it'd be quite interesting to see power differences, uh, different parts of a race or during a session, for, uh, different for speeds. Us looking at pros, you know, yeah, like we've yeah. been looking at the power files from Kona on the bike. It'd be interesting to see how yeah. that. Because one thing I, I'm, de this is where we just need to try it out and uh, and see what it's all about. Is, you know, a Kenyan runner who works on a lot of elasticity in their tendons and their muscles, like they're probably going to have less power than mm. someone like myself or even yeah, yeah, or, or like, Lionel Sanders. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, and how does that? compare or translate to performance. Mm. Um, does it matter? Yeah, and it, maybe it's just a, absolutely just a personal thing that yeah. you then track when you're fatigued, etc. Yeah. So yeah, very interesting. Yeah, well in other tech news, slightly you know, less expensive and probably more accessible, there's a new reflective skin paint, which I want to try it, I want to wear it out, I think it sounds quite cool. Basically, instead of having to wear like, you know, bright colored clothes or um, reflective gear, which can be a bit bulky. Um, if you live somewhere hot, I guess, so not really relevant for us, and you're running in the dark, you can just put this paint on your arms or on the backs of your calves and it'll show up if you're having to run along roads. Or for a night out. I know, we, we should try G it. GTN Christmas party, here we come. There we go. We wish you a Merry Christmas. My coffee's kicked in at last. <laughs> G, T no, no, no. G. <laughs> On to the GTM poll, and last week we asked you how you would like to replace the swim when it gets cancelled in various triathlons. And the results are in pull-ups was the least favourite with just 7% of you going for that. Longer cycle, 18% of you were keen for a bit more cycling. 27% went for rowing, which I was quite surprised at, and probably not that unsurprising the run came out top with 46% preferring to do a double run. Yeah, and we had quite a lot of comments below with people's preferences. Um, Tim Krause said he'd like to do burpees. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that, Heather. Yeah, I don't know how many burpees you'd have to do. Yeah, Quite a lot. Um, definitely, I'm not a fan of the that. I thought of getting on the bike after burpees. <laughs> um, James Hutchinson said, okay, it's a funny one. Um, I need to see a pull-up competition or a swim race between Heather and me. Yeah, I know what you'd prefer. 
Well, I don't know. You know, I can be in training for these pull-ups. Oh, so. okay. Well. Um, and obviously, a lot of people um, just, you know, understandably, they're upset about swims being cancelled. Um, Growing Young said, rather than replacing the swim with anything else, it should just be a bike and a run. Yeah, I think he's not a fan of swimming. But, I mean, some people also, you know, said they'd quite like their money back. So I think that depends on the race organisers yeah. whether you can or not. So no, it's a tough one, isn't it? Minute. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously the race organisers are doing, you know, it, they've got your own interests at heart, but they're also, you know, they're, they're doing the best thing they can. And it, for some people, it's nice just to race. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, um, moving on to this week's poll, we want to know whether you will be training or not on Christmas Day. Yeah, um, yes, or no way, Jose. Um, I like to, I head out every year with my family. Actually, we don a Santa's hat, each of us. Um, admittedly, sometimes it is only 10 minutes, uh, but it's nice. Still counts as training, I guess. <laughs> well, let us know in the poll whether you train on Christmas Day or not, and send in any pictures. I mean, we want to see a picture of you, Mark, to prove that you do actually do this on Christmas Day. Okay, and given the time of the year, less races um, happening, we thought we'd talk about winter triathlon, which consists of running, mountain biking, and cross-country skiing. Yeah, well, we've got the European and World Championships coming up. So the World Champs in January in Romania, and then followed, we've got the European Championships in Italy just after. Yeah, um, very exciting format. I'd love to do one. I don't know about you, Heather. Yeah, I would like to have a game. Yeah, and we also have, it's more of a Canadian sport, the S3, which is a slightly different format. You've got snowshoe, skating, and skiing. Yeah, that one I think I need to steer clear of. My skating, um, my skating I'd love to see it, though. I have, I've never seen it before, and it sounds fascinating. Do you run on the snowshoes? No idea. Yeah, I think we should try it out. Yeah. Well, anyway, t back to cross-country skiing and the winter triathlon. Uh, it has been proven, obviously, looking at some of the cross-country skiers and their VO2s, it is an absolutely amazing sport for cross-training for triathlon. Yeah. Oh, we used to do... I mean, I know it's an amazing sport, but we used to be made to do it on training camps. I must have been on about 10... Um, cross country skiing training camps and I was quite excited when there wasn't enough snow one year and we got to go running instead. Um, I have to say I, I did it once and it was fun but yeah I yeah. agree it's hard work. It is quite work. fun when you get to go downhill and I can actually vaguely ski, like, ski downhill and the, the girls who are much better than me up the hill like just because they're really long and skinny and it's just <laughs> it's chaos. But. Yeah well actually um, Brett Sutton who coaches Daniel Arif he's one of the most famous triathlon coaches mm. out there he vouches for just how good cross country yeah. skiing is for triathlon in terms of Cross training, building your strength, building your VO2, and I believe you even said about downhill skiing. Yeah, I noticed that bit, and I've just put my skiing holiday. So that means that my week of skiing holiday is training. Yeah, you validated that. There yeah. we go. Um, but also, uh, a lot of pros you'll see doing cross country skiing in the off season. We've got obviously Daniela Reef, Paula Findlay, Cameron, um, Cameron Dye. Dye, yeah. Um, and actually, Jesse Thomas, we've just seen doing some cross country skiing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm behind you. I won't. Yeah, you start it, I'll then um, come in as well. Three, two, one. Jingle play! <laughs> <laughs> You're leaving me high and dry singing Jingle Bells. It's time for the GTN Tribe, and this week we're going to head to Cyprus. We're actually going to North Cyprus, where Aris Sports Club are based, and it's Dennis who's sent in some pictures and some info, saying that they're very much about encouraging people to do their events, and they're really keen on putting on quite a few camps as well. Yeah, and they even organise a race each year. It's called the April Jokes Race. They do a middle-distance race, and it's kind of like they do a little bit of a festival around the whole weekend, and they do a 640-kilometre bike ride to promote friendship and just participation within their club um, around the whole of the Cyprus island. Yeah, Very impressive. I think, I think that's great, trying to get everybody involved yeah. in the sport. And we've got a few photos of them active, and it looks like a very fun club. And apparently they've, well, between them, they've completed a lot of Ironmans and Ironman 70.3s. Yeah. Um, really very fun club. Yeah, and I mean, from what I know of Cyprus, it's a great place for cycling as well. I've actually been out there and did a bit of swimming in the sea, and it's so they've got um, you know a great place to do the sport as well. So and we can't we can't move on without looking at their kit as well. Very jazzy. Yeah, yeah. it's quite a few different combinations of the yellow and green going on there. Well, we would love to hear from your club. So if you've got any cool photos or anything that's interesting, do send it in using the hashtag GTN Tribe over Twitter and Facebook. Okay, now it's time for the caption competition where you get your chance to win a GTN swimming cap. Last week, we had a photo of Ryan Sissons and Mario Mola chucking a load of beer over Jacob Burtwistle. Um, and we had a lot of people coming in with very similar con uh, comments. Um, Jim said, 
Oh, you finished? Here's mine. Well, Jim, congratulations, you are our favourite. So do send in your details on Facebook and we'll get that cap out to you. Um, and on to this one's, this week's caption competition and it's from Iron Man Barcelona and it's Yvonne van Vlerken doing a cartwheel over the line. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, maybe her legs were so tired she thought she'd use her hands, but to risk doing that when all the world's press are there. I've got a bit of a dad joke here for you. Um, what do you call an Iron Man doing a cartwheel? An Iron Man doing a cartwheel. A Ferris wheel. Do you know, I, I think that's awesome. I think that's a really Thanks. good one. I, th I think you guys are going to struggle to beat Mark's caption this week, yeah. which I wouldn't normally I th say. I thought long and hard about that one. I'm pretty proud of it. Well, please send in your captions um, in the comments below. Well, for comments of the week this week, we've actually found one that really caught our eye. And it was from the long run video that went out recently. And it's Aidan De Jagger sent this message in saying, nice video, but serious props to the cameraman running on those sharp rocks and not killing himself trying to film. I just like that because I think, yeah, that, I mean, watching it myself, I was like, that's pretty good camera Yeah, work. we can't give away any secrets though. Yeah, it's, but um, it's magic how they do it. So. <laughs> um, but we love reading your comments. So please do keep sending them in in the comments below. And now on to the GTM Pain Cave, and we've picked out a few of our favourites this week. Starting off with Jodie Smith, and this is probably the most minimalistic, kind of cool looking it's, pain cave It's we definitely had. up there. That is cool, isn't it? Um, on a Wahoo kicker. Um, a on, lot of mats as well, it's protecting that floor. It's yeah, pristine looking big, floor. big screen. You're not gonna miss anything on that. If you're on Zwift, you are in the action. Got a nice coffee table, nice stool for their towel and it, it almost looks like a show home. It's very precise yeah. looking. I like yeah, it. It's making and I like the rubbish, isn't it? Yeah, although it clashes with the chair. But All right. Good setup. Uh, next up, we have one from Vicky Ferg, and this is her pain cave with kick, uh, Wahoo Kicker Snap, Zwift, uh, Training Peaks on her iPad, apparently. This is cool as well, isn't it? She's got it all set up and another big screen. Oh, I'm feeling pretty envious of all these uh, pain caves. Yeah, it's um, a good very setup. Very nice. And finally, from Mads Peter Hansen, a uh, very Christmassy pain cave here, isn't it? He looks very close to his Christmas tree. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love it. Yeah, very festive. And look who's on the screen here. Uh, that is you. Yeah, I'm not GTN. sure if that's going to be motivating or not. But <laughs> um, And another Wahoo kicker snap. Look at that. Wow. Very impressive. I wonder if that'll be coming out at Christmas as well. And please do keep sending your pain caves in using the hashtag GTN Pain Cave or send them in over Facebook. We do love looking at them and hopefully you'll be featured on the GTN show. Sorry. We'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And yes. if you'd like to Happy see- Happy Christmas. <laughs> Sorry. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'll just sit here and be no, my no. cracker. I'm gonna be a cracker, it's fine. That's the end of the GTN show. And amazingly, you've stayed in that outfit the whole way through. I'm feeling very Christmassy now. Yeah, I think you should stay in it till Christmas. Maybe I will. Um, we'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And if you'd like to see more videos from GTN, click on the globe and subscribe. And if you'd like to see the best custom kit of 2017, click down here. And if you are going to be doing some training over Christmas and you want some tips on a long run, just watch this video here. <laughs>